Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use an external power supply to power a RoboClaw motor controller. Using a battery is really simple, but for anyone that wants to use a dedicated switch mode power supply like this one, there's a little trick that you need to know about the regenerative braking, and you're going to need to install a diode in series with the power supply. So let's see how it operates normally. So let me first explain the setup that I've got going on here. Right now the power supply is not connected. Um, I've got a battery. This is a three cell LiPo, I believe. So, you know, somewhere around 12 volts and the capacity doesn't really matter. And then I have a lead here so I can connect my battery. And I've got this connected into a Servo City linear actuator. This is my motor. This really doesn't matter. This could be a standard brushed motor. Doesn't really matter for this case. It does have a brushed motor on it. Um, it's just a little easier to see everything work. And then I have um, this lead connected over to um, S1. I've got this in analog mode so that when I hit the joystick this way, it moves out and I hit the other way, it goes the other way in. So that is the basic setup. So let's connect the battery and see how it operates. So this is standard, normal, good operation. So if I go one way, it goes out. I go the other way, it goes back in. And um, this is the normal speed that it should be working. Um, this power supply is a higher voltage, so it will go a little faster here in a second. But this is standard operation, and this is how it should work. And you notice I can kind of go back and forth pretty quickly without an issue. So now let's connect the power supply, which is significantly more powerful, and let's see how that operates. Okay, so now the power supply is connected. You might be able to see this on camera. The green light is on, and it moves quite a bit faster, but I don't know if you saw that. The RoboClaw turned off as soon as I stopped, and now the whole system is dead. I do not have any light on the power supply and I'll have to unplug it, wait a few seconds, and now it is back on. And I can move it in one direction, but as soon as it stops, it's gonna have that red light go on and turn off. So let's go into the software for the RoboClaw and actually see what's happening. So I'm now inside the software and I'm gonna go ahead and click Connect and we can see everything is in here. And if we look up here, we see 24 volts from the power supply, which is correct. Now let's go ahead and move the motor and I want you to watch, um, I think it's uh, right around here, the main battery. So we're gonna move it out a little bit. And then we see this main battery low turn yellow. And well, I'm going to recycle this again just so you can watch up here, but we're only getting six volts off of that main battery, and I think that just has to do with um, what was left in the capacitors when it died. So I'm going to unplug this, plug it back in, and we should be able to reconnect here in a second. Okay, so now we're back to 24 volts, and if I move it, we can see that this sags as soon as I let off. So it just goes all the way back down to six. So what's happening here is this is a regenerative braking motor controller. So that means that this motor spins and it has some inertia, and when it slows down and stops, this is no longer pushing power into the motor, and therefore the motor inertia is back feeding back into the motor controller. This is pretty standard. This motor controller, instead of clamping that power down, however you want to say it, it is back feeding it back into the power supply, and the switch mode power supply really doesn't like power coming back into it, so it is turning off and the whole system turns off. With a battery situation, that power coming back into the battery is not a big deal. That's the regenerative braking. It's actually regenerating the power back into here. Unfortunately, you can't turn that feature off. So if you're using an external power supply like this, you're gonna run into that issue. So it's a really simple fix. All we need to do is have a diode in series. So let me hook this up and show you how to fix it. So here is the same setup, but now I have a diode in series with the positive leg of the barrel jack connector. A diode is um, really just like a check valve or a one-way valve that lets power only go one way. 
So power is flowing out of the power supply into this barrel jack and then into the roboclaw. It can flow this way, but it can't flow back the other way. You can see that there's a white line on this side of the diode. You want to make sure that it is facing that direction. You'll oftentimes see diodes um, with a triangle and then a white line. That means that the power can flow this way, but when it hits that white line, it can't go backwards. And I'm just using some standard shot key diodes that you can get from Amazon. I've got a link down below. These are rated at 15 amps worth of current. So just make sure that you spec the diodes for the maximum amount of rating that you're gonna be using on your motors. 15 amps is definitely overkill, but overkill is not a problem here. So I've got the white line on that side, meaning that when the roboclaw generates the power, it cannot back feed into the supply. So let's make sure this is on. Let's connect this up. So I got everything connected up. I am connected into the Roboclaw. You can see I'm running you know, right at 24 volts once again. So let's move the linear actuator and see what happens. And so now I've got no issue moving it back and forth. And you can see this jumps around a little bit, but not a whole lot. There's just a little bit of a surge, probably from the power supply, um, because it is going to measure the load and then give a little bit extra when the load goes away. So not too bad. So that is all that's needed is just a diode in series with the red. This is not covered in the manual, so it's definitely something that is worth knowing. Thanks for watching.